of Holy Trinity Guildwood and our online service of worship for Trinity Sunday and Refugee Sunday. My name is Stephen, Stephen Kirkgaard, and we are so glad that you can worship with us today. Not only is it our name day feast, we as a parish have had a great passion for refugees over the years, sponsoring several refugee families from the Sudan and Syria. So we rejoice in our name day feast and also as we focus on the important cause of refugees. Although we are socially distant, thanks to the internet, we can still be spiritually close and come together as the body of Christ to praise and worship our Lord and Savior. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty Early in the morning our song shall rise to Blessed Trinity, holy, 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 though the darkness hide thee, though our sinful human gaze thy glory may not see, only thou art holy, there is none beside thee. Perfect in power, in love and purity. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God, we come into your presence with praise and thanksgiving. You have searched us, known us, cared for us, and welcomed us as daughters and sons. In you, we find our home. Through the power of your Holy Spirit and the inspiration of your word, continue to work in and through us. Transform us into your image. Make us signs and grace and hospitality to the world around us so that your kingdom would come and your will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, Holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the king the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongues. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, 
Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I. Send me. Listen for the leading of the Spirit. Worship the King, O glorious above, O gratefully sing His power and love. Our shield and defender, the Ancient of Days, pavilioned in splendor and girded with praise. O tell of his might, O sing of his grace, whose robe is the light, whose canopy space, his chariots of wrath, the deep thunder clouds form, and dark is his path on the wings of the storm. The earth with its store of wonders untold, Almighty thy power hath founded of old, hath established it fast by a changeless decree, and around it hath cast like a mantle the sea. Thy bountiful care, what tongue can recite? It breathes in the air, it shines in the light. It streams from the hills, it descends to the plain, and sweetly distills in the dew and the rain. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. Listen to the leading of the Spirit. be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. 
What is born of flesh is flesh, and what is born of spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the most blessed Trinity. Amen. Our gospel story this morning begins in darkness of night and ends in brightness of light. It's a story inviting all of us to come into the light, be blessed by the light, and share the light. Although Nicodemus recognizes Jesus' ministry, he says, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Still, Nicodemus comes to visit Jesus in the shadow of night, hoping he won't be seen. He doesn't want to be knowingly associated with this Jesus who has just caused an uproar among his colleagues the religious authorities in Jerusalem by overturning the tables of the temple merchants and driving out the money changers and vendors with a whip of cords. But something, something is drawing him to Jesus. Afraid of authority, afraid of his peers, he tries to finesse the situation by coming under cover of darkness, hoping he won't be seen. This, it just doesn't seem right. What is a religious leader doing, worrying about what the neighbors, boss, or colleagues will think, instead of focusing on what's right, what's loving, what's true, what is God calling him or her to do? And then I realize, that's a lot like me. I have to confess that as your priest, I'm sometimes more concerned with avoiding social sanction and avoiding the cattle prod than focusing on the will of God. Of course, that's the way our whole dysfunctional world works, the carrot and the stick. Be a good little boy, be a good little girl, do what I want and you will get a treat. You will get a reward, a donkey treat, a carrot. Don't do what I want and you'll be punished, beaten with a stick. Paul in his letter to the Romans calls this way the world works the spirit of slavery, and calls his fellow believers, and yes, that includes us, out of the darkness of our fear, into the glory 
the shining radiance of our inheritance as children of God, joint heirs with Christ of God's loving and guiding spirit. It's not an inheritance, Paul says, that any of us have earned. It's just pure gift, pure goodness, pure love of God for you. Compared to God's glory, we have all fallen short. None of us are worthy. Even Isaiah says, woe is me. I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the king. Now here's the good news. We can all relax. God loves you and me so extravagantly that even in our brokenness, he calls us his own his children. God calls us to enter into communion with her, to feast with her, to be loved. It's not about rules. It's not about regulations. There's way too many of them to always get it right. It's not about people pleasing and appeasing. One can't please all the people all the time. It's about relationship, the Trinity, the love relationship within God, and the radical freedom of a life lived in love, free from worry and anxiety. The spirit-filled life, which Jesus likens to the wind. At the end of the Gospel of John when so many have fled. It is Nicodemus who in full daylight now comes to claim the body of Jesus from the cross and give him a proper burial. Where does Nicodemus find such courage when to stand up for Jesus means to risk all, reputation, livelihood, even life? In the love of God, Nicodemus has become a person of mature faith, one who acts as if God's promises are true. No fear, no worry, just stepping out in freedom, stepping out into the light to follow Jesus. The scripture continues past this pericope and says, and this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world. Those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. Nicodemus has come to believe in, to live in the good news. He is enlightened. The text continues, those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. To believe in the name of God, what does this mean? As Christians, we understand God's name to be Jesus, the English translation of the Greek, Iesus, which in its Hebrew form, Yahshua, or Aramaic form, Yeshua, means God saves, God salves, God heals. The gospel is saying, don't run from God, run to God. Don't sit far off hoping you won't get called upon. Come near like Isaiah. Sit close and say, here am I, send me. So God may then enter into your life and bless you and heal you 
and equip and empower you to do good, to do God's will, to do ministry and make the world on earth a bit more like the kingdom of heaven. Because we are the body of Christ. We are the hands, the feet, the voice through which God's dream, God's vision, the reign of God is to be realized. In summers past, I would sometimes head down to spend a week with friends in rural Michigan. It's Bible Belt country. As you drive along in some of the farmer's fields, you might see a giant sign. Believe, John 3.16. Martin Luther called this verse the gospel in miniature. I'd like to also add verse 17. In the words of John's Gospel, chapter three, verses 16 and 17, from Eugene Peterson's paraphrase, The Message, God loved the world so much that he gave his only son. God didn't go to all the trouble of sending his son merely to point an accusing finger, telling the world how bad it was. He came to help the world be right again. Jesus is here among us and within us to help us be right, be tight with God again. As you commune with God right now, right here, Know that you are loved by God and that Jesus holds you close. And that Jesus' spirit, the Holy Spirit, is within you, closer than your breath, closer than your heartbeat. And hear the gentle voice of God's spirit. Hear her voice of care guidance, and wisdom. And like the wind, let Jesus' love blow away the dead branches and debris and lift your dreams up high like a kite soaring on the wind that together we may all dream, pray, and work with Jesus for a loving peaceful, and equitable world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And now let us say together an immigrant apostle's creed. I believe in almighty God who guided the people in exile and in exodus, the God of Joseph in Egypt and Daniel in Babylon, the God of foreigners and immigrants. I believe in Jesus Christ, a displaced Galilean who was born away from his people and his home, who fled his country with his parents when his life was in danger. When he returned to his own country, he suffered under the oppression of Pontius Pilate, the servant of a foreign power. Jesus was persecuted, beaten, tortured, and unjustly condemned to death. But on the third day, Jesus rose from the dead, not as a scorned foreigner, but to offer us citizenship in God's kingdom. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the eternal immigrant from God's kingdom among us, who speaks all languages, lives in all countries, and reunites all races. I believe that the church is the secure home for foreigners and for all believers. I believe that the communion of saints begins when we embrace all God's people 
in all their diversity. Paige, would you kindly lead us in prayer? In the mystery of the Trinity, God has disclosed to us God's own deepest self. We rejoice that we have been graced with this revelation, saying, holy, holy, holy God, hear our prayer. May all have a sense of their dignity and destiny as beloved children of God, sharing in the life and love of the Trinity. Holy, holy, holy God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. May each of us feel a call to mission, to play our part in communicating God's love in the world. Holy, holy, holy God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for people who are searching for God. May the Holy Spirit lead them to Christ and show them the wonder of who God is. Holy, holy, holy God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for your church, the bishops, clergy, and people of La Iglesia Anglica de Mexico, the theological colleges of the Anglican Church of Canada. We pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Linda, our primate, Anne, our metropolitan, Andrew, our diocesan bishop, and Kevin, our area bishop and diversity officer. And our parish family of Holy Trinity Guildwood, we pray for Aldwin Chin, Liliana Rodriguez, Nicholas and Jacob, Belinda, Julian, and Joshua Chin, Carrie Ann Chow, and Jonathan Leo. For Lynn Marie Every, who's celebrating a birthday. For John and Leslie Hetherington, who are celebrating an anniversary. We give thanks for the ministry of our screening coordinator, Elizabeth Raymer. And we pray for our priests, Stephen, Harold, and Ravi. Give us a passion for your gospel and a vision of your reign in which we are all included. Holy, holy, holy God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the world for peace that a spirit of respect and reconciliation may grow among nations and peoples. We hold in heart and mind those who flee their homes and who seek safety in a new place. May we be filled with a spirit of compassion and grace to welcome and help with open arms those who come to us in deep need. May all human beings learn to live as a family in unity and diversity. Holy, holy, holy God, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for the wellness of all God's people, especially all affected by COVID-19. And we give thanks for the hastening of vaccinations in Canada and in the GTA. We pray for the sick and those in need, especially those who have requested our prayers. Al, Alberta, Alf, Carol, Frida, George, John, June, Lynn Marie, Lurleen, Mark, Maureen, Nancy, Ray, Richard, Robbie, Scott, and Wendy. We give thanks for prayers answered and Bruce's ongoing recovery. And we pray for any others known to you. For Bruce, for David, for Beata, for Deborah, Joanne, John. Help us all to play our part in making your world better. Holy, holy, holy God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for those who have died, especially Minnie Jenkinson. May the Holy Spirit bring them to Christ to share in his glory as children of God. Holy, holy, holy God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We rejoice that you are our creator, redeemer, and sustainer, and have made us in your own image. Thank you for calling us to be part of your mission. Holy, 
holy, holy God. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. O Holy Trinity, infinite, incarnate, eminent, in whom are power, forgiveness, and grace, inspire us to remember those who founded us, enliven us to rejoice in all who walk with us, encourage us to renew our life in you with those who come to us, so that we go forth in love to serve as community, and all may grow together through time into eternity. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Well, God's peace to you on this wonderful celebration of the Blessed Trinity, the God who creates us, the God who sustains and redeems us. Each week we put out a newsletter electronically. We'd love to send this newsletter to you. And um, all we need is your email. So if you'd like to send an email to the parish office, we'd be delighted to send you our newsletter on a Friday. Uh, one of the things in the newsletter is a link uh, to the Aura video, the Anglican United Refugee Alliance video, which talks about the ministry of sponsorship to refugees and features a number of select interviews of parishes in the GTA dedicated to refugee sponsorship. If you'd like to hear that story and how Holy Trinity is one of these churches, that link is found in our newsletter, and it's on the Aura page and the Anglican page on YouTube. We have all sorts of faith exploration opportunities. We continue with our study of the Pro Futures Faith Series featuring Michael Dowd. We're about to begin something with the Book of James, and we continue our bi-weekly women's Bible study. There's an ongoing this month, uh, Jewelry and Treasures. Actually, it goes also into June, uh, Treasures and Trinkets Online. You'd be welcome to check out that. And finally, as we know that relationship is deep in the very nature of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we can understand why the lack of relationship during COVID is causing many of us distress and discomfort. We celebrate that so many Canadians are getting their vaccine. We encourage Canadians everywhere and people in Toronto to be vaccinated. And we'll have a special webinar about germs, vaccinations, hosted by scientist Francis Jeffers. Again, these details are found in our newsletter. We'd like to invite you to subscribe to our Holy Trinity channel, YouTube channel. Please, if you find these videos helpful, comment on them, like them, share them. Dare to share what you love with those whom you love. And we are so grateful for your financial support. These videos and worship require uh, financial resources Thank you for your generosity, which makes both our ministry presence in the physical world and the world of the internet online. Your generosity makes a difference. I bind unto myself today the strong name of the Trinity by invocation of the same, the three in one and one in three. I bind this day to me forever by power of faith, Christ's incarnation, his baptism in the Jordan River, his death on cross for my salvation, 
is bursting from the spiced tomb is riding up the heavenly way is coming at the day of doom i bind unto myself today i bind unto myself today the power of god to hold and lead his eye to watch, his might to stay, his ear to hearken to my need, the wisdom of my God to teach, his hand to guide, his shield to ward, the word of God to give me speech, his heavenly host to be my God. Living God, receive all we offer you this day. Grant that hearing your word and responding to your spirit, we may share in your divine life. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise because in the mystery you disclose to us, you reveal your glory as the glory of your Son and the Holy Spirit, three persons, equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, yet one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your everlasting glory. Therefore, with all the company of heaven, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take. Eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son in his sacrifice that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. 
in the fullness of time. Reconcile all things in Christ and make them new and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I am the bread of life, says the Lord. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. The gifts of God for you, the people of God. Son and Spirit, Holy Communion, three in one. Holy Father, Son and Spirit, Holy Communion, three in one. Come with your peace, with your invitation. Bind us together in holy love. Come with your peace, with your invitation. Bind us together in holy love. Father, Son, and Spirit, Holy Communion, three in one. Holy Father, Son, and Spirit, Holy Communion, three in one. Come with your peace, with your invitation, bind us together in holy love. Come with your peace, with your invitation, bind us together in holy love. Three in one, three in one, three in one. Holy Father, Son, and Spirit, holy communion, three in one. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, may we who have received this Eucharist worship you in all we do and proclaim the glory of your majesty. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, 
whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. As part of the, as the offertory hymn, Myron uh, did the St. Patrick's breastplate. And there's a beautiful verse there that I'd like you to repeat after me as part of our blessing concluding this liturgy. Christ be with me. Christ within me. Christ behind me. Christ before me. Christ beside me. Christ to win me. Christ to comfort and restore me. Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. May the company of Christ be with you always and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. For these many fruitful years, Lord, we bring you thanks and praise for the laughter and the tears and the joy of settled days love which binds the trinity hold us keep us constantly for the depths of faith we share and for difference we respect Burdens we find strength to bear, blessings that we dared not expect. Love which binds the Trinity, hold us, keep us constantly. So for all that has been thanks, and for what shall yet be, yes, Lord, for what's awaiting us, set our hearts on steadfastness. Love which binds the Trinity, hold us, keep us constantly. The splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and the darkness tries to hide. It trembles at his voice, it trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Age to age he stands, 
and the time is in his hands beginning and the end beginning and the end the god had three in one father spirit son the lion and the lamb the lion and the lamb how great is our god sing with me how great is our god and all will see how great how great is our god name above all names worthy of all praise my heart will sing how great is our god How great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God.